The 1984 movie The Terminator started with a scene of a future war in the year 2029 before the opening credits came up. After the opening credits, audiences are teleported to the year 1984 at Griffith's Observatory as the Terminator makes its first appearance. The Terminator then goes to demand the clothes off some drunk punks and the ensuing fight results in the death of one with the other two undetermined. The scene then shifts to downtown LA as a soldier named Kyle Reese appears and the chase to reach Sarah Connor begins. In 1991's Terminator 2 Judgment Day, the Terminator arrives first yet again in the year 1995, while the T-1000 arrives second and the race to reach John Connor begins. In 2003's Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, the TX arrives in 2004, followed by the Terminator as they pursue John Connor, Catherine Brewster, and anyone who would try to aid them in the future war. These movies involve two time travelers going back in time to pursue an individual, and yet there's an interesting question. Why isn't the first Terminator the only time traveler? The Terminator movies are a race against time to reach an individual, and yet in the first and third movies, the villain arrives first, before the hero. Therefore, how is Kyle Reese or the Terminator from Terminator 3 even able to time travel back after the Terminator and TX already went through? The answer lies in what form of time travel James Cameron chose to use for his movies. He chose the wormhole theory. While there are different rules to time travel, the wormhole theory is more plausible due to the window of opportunity factor. When Reese arrives at the time displacement equipment after the destruction of Skynet in 2029, the Terminator had already gone through, and therefore, by that moment, history should have been altered by the Terminator having succeeded in killing Sarah Connor the moment the Terminator vanished. The reason it wasn't is that when the Terminator went through, it opened a door linking 2029 to 1984, and thus, the moment it arrived, it needed clothes, weapons, and transportation in order to find and kill Sarah Connor. The time spent getting what it needed to reach Sarah Connor in 1984 would also pass in 2029, the moment the Terminator left as the door remained open for someone to try and stop it. Taking Kyle Reese out of the equation, the Terminator left 2029 and arrived in 1984 at 1.52 a.m. on May 13th. It wasn't until later that night, around 7 to 9 p.m., that the Terminator finally reached her. That's less than 24 hours for the Terminator to reach its target. The moment it left, despite being two separate time periods, the amount of time the Terminator spent reaching its target upon its arrival passed as well in 2029, providing a window of opportunity for the Resistance to send someone back to stop it. This likely is also the logical explanation for Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. The TX is first sent back by Skynet, and afterward the Terminator is able to follow through by the Resistance because by the time the Terminator arrived, the TX was still in the middle of its pursuit. Many different sci-fi and sci-fantasy stories that include time travel often argue which method of time travel is the more accurate method. The truth is that time travel is still hard to understand realistically, so that is why each sci-fi and sci-fantasy establishes a preset rule of time travel per franchise. Terminator The Sarah Connor Chronicles and Terminator Genesis broke this rule as they had the characters travel forward in time and thus messed up the story, making it too confusing to follow. Genesis is worse in this regard as they have John, Reese, and Sarah displaced from their own timelines and thus evil John can kill his parents before he's born and still exist? This completely screws up the preset rule of time travel in the Terminator franchise. The Terminator was established by James Cameron to have the wormhole theory because it was simplistic. Terminator 2 3D Battle Across Time did something similar as the Terminator brought teenage John Connor forward in time to the future war to defeat Skynet once and for all. Now in this attraction, we don't see future John nor the Resistance and therefore one assumes that they don't exist because young John jumped over the years he did not experience. However, when John asks where they are, the Terminator clearly states, The future. The final battle between humans and machines. Therefore, future John and the Resistance still exist. They're just not seen. 
This means that regardless of whether or not Skynet is destroyed in the past or the future, John is sure to return to his timeline and live to see the future war. The thing is, though, that it doesn't mean John can't be killed. If young John is killed in the middle of the future war, it'll alter history in that moment because he can't return to his own timeline and live to see the future war. Therefore, if Kyle Reese had spent the less than 24 hours in 2029 dilly-dallying, then the Terminator would have succeeded and the future would have changed drastically. The wormhole theory suggests that the two timelines of past and future are linked the moment a trip through time is made. Therefore, what changes in the past will alter the future even as things are in motion. An example of this is seen in Terminator Salvation. John told very few people about Kyle Reese being his father that he needs to send back in time to protect his mother and ensure his birth. Yet Skynet is somehow aware of this closely guarded secret, as in Salvation, there is a hit list made by Skynet where John is number two on the list and Kyle Reese is number one, showing that Skynet knows. Now how does Skynet know this? In Terminator 1, Kyle Reese stated that most records were lost in the war. But that was in his timeline. This future isn't his timeline as things have changed and thus new records were made. Another example of the wormhole theory for time travel is the video game Spider-Man Edge of Time. Peter Parker's Spider-Man from the present has his reality changed around him without him knowing it by the time traveler named Walker Sloan from 2099. Before changing history, Walker Sloan was pursued by Miguel O'Hara's Spider-Man 2099, and, just as Sloan went through, Miguel jumped through at the last second. Caught in the time wormhole, Miguel witnessed the changes to the timeline, but was able to preserve his memories of his own timeline before he's forced back out into the altered 2099. After communicating with the altered Peter Parker Spider-Man via temporal telepathy, don't ask me about that now, Peter sets about to help aid in repairing the timeline on his end. Meanwhile, Miguel is chased out of the time chamber by security and has to get back to the time portal, and while doing so, he comes across some traps that will kill him. Peter is able to remove these traps by altering the timeline via destroying certain objects in his time period, thus saving Miguel's life in his. One more example of the wormhole theory is in X-Men Days of Future Past a story that, coincidentally, was conceived around the same exact time as the original Terminator film. Both the comic and the movie Days of Future Past have a dark future where mutants are hunted to extinction by hateful humans and genocidal machines called Sentinels. In a desperate effort to change things, the mutants send the mind of one of their own back in time to their younger body before the dark future comes about to stop a catalytic event that sparks the dark future. The moment the future mind reaches the younger body, the younger mind goes to sleep while the future mind takes control. The future mind remains in control until either the future is changed or the future body dies. The director of the Days of Future Past movie, Brian Singer, even went to talk with James Cameron about time travel and string theory in preparation for the film. In the movie, the time traveler succeeds in altering the initial catalytic event that sparks the dark future, but the one change isn't enough to completely alter the future. Things are still in motion. Like Jedi Grandmaster Yoda once said, Always in motion is the future. That's why if Sarah wanted to completely prevent Judgment Day and the future war, she couldn't do it just by simply killing off Miles Dyson. She'd have to kill off everyone at Cyberdyne and burn the building to the ground and any other that would try to make their own Skynet. That's why one deed isn't enough to completely alter the future. That's why even if the Terminator succeeded in killing Sarah Connor in the first movie, that doesn't mean it prevented the rise of the Resistance. Kyle Reese would ensure the Resistance reforms with his own future knowledge and would likely adopt a child and name him John Connor to preserve the legacy at least until he could send himself back in time to correct his mistake in failing to save Sarah. So even if the Terminator killed Sarah, it would have to kill off Kyle Reese and then ensure Skynet's creation. No single deed completely changes an entire future. Remember, there's no fate but what we make, and you can bet on that.